There's a lot to say about Shenmue 3, and a lot to defend. Is it a perfect game? No. I think it's the weakest of the three Shenmue games. But as a fan of the series, or as someone who isn't familiar with it, it's still a good game. Looking at the Metacritic for Shenmue 3 is a sad sight. I think back to 1999 when I got my hands on that Dreamcast magazine with Shenmue screenshots. I was a kid then, and the graphics were the most realistic thing I've seen in a game at that time. In fact, I was kind of scared of how real it all looked. I know, it's silly to think that now, but you had to be there. Shenmue 2 continued that feeling of wonder that I loved. The cheesy dialogue was charming. Get out of my way. What? And the soundtrack to those games were so intense. All power, no focus! As a kid, I also loved watching kung fu movies from the 70s and 80s. And well, Shenmue reminded me of those movies. So I loved it even more. And then there was nothing. I loved the Dreamcast, so I was sad when that console died off, which also meant that the amazing Yu Suzuki series was more or less finished. Shemu 2 being ported onto the Xbox was a treat, but nothing ever captured the magic of the Dreamcast and the original Shemu. So like many others, I waited and waited. You'd hear a few rumors here and there, see screenshots that were more than likely fake, of Shenmue 3. Fast forward many years later, in 2015, we finally got some news of Shenmue 3 at E3. And then there were more news that came out about it being a Kickstarter project, and that eventually broke records. Everything was looking good, but those early screenshots were pretty rough looking. That was not Ryo. Shenhua looked fine, but what happened here? Luckily, designs changed. Trailers began to release the following months, and yeah, the animation looked pretty stiff, but man, people claimed the game was already dead. There's some strange mentality with people when it comes to independent video games. Yu Suzuki is an accomplished game developer, but he had not worked on a game since, well, Shenmue 2. But People seem to think AAA games are made for around the same amount of money Shenmue 3 collected. And, well, let's take a look here. A typical Call of Duty game, all together, will cost about $200 million. Another example is Tomb Raider, which cost about $100 million. Yes, I know those games are huge. I get it. Well, Shenmue back on the Dreamcast cost up to $70 million, and that was with a major company like Sega backing them. But now it was different. The game was being paid for by the gamers, made explicitly for them. And yes, you have to take that into account when criticizing the game. It didn't matter how awkward the game looked, or how cartoony these characters were beginning to look like. We were finally going to play the next chapter. Yes, I said chapter of the Shenmue story. Because anyone who thought this would be the last game obviously did not do their research, and many reviewers didn't. Fast forward to 2019, and we finally got a set release date. More trailers came out, and... Damn, they actually spoiled a lot in these. So at the end of September, those who backed the project on Kickstarter were given a trial demo of the game a mere few weeks before release. A lot of articles popped up about this demo, and the titles were more or less along the lines of Being Stuck in 1999, or Shenmue 3 is a callback to 1999. Funny, right? Oh, and when the actual reviews were in for the game, there were even more hilarious titles, such as From the Forgotten Time, A Return to Slow Pleasures, and so on. We get it. Now, a few pissed me off, especially ones claiming that Shenmue fans deserved better. But first, I want to address the gamers out there. 
seeing comments like this need to be talked about. Shenmue is the most divisive game series ever. You'll love it or hate it. So usually that means there is some sort of bias. What I don't see though is a totally unbiased opinion on Shenmue 3. Let me explain. Way too many people are comparing it to other modern games. How about comparing it to other independent or Kickstarter games? You don't see that happening a lot with these comments. Another important factor when talking about Shenmue 3 is that, yes, even according to the game creator, it's meant to feel like an older title. Yes, there is a huge gap in terms of release dates, but the game takes off right after where part 2 ended. So you have to ask yourself, why make such a huge drastic change in terms of gameplay or design? I think that's pretty silly. Now maybe if it were Sega making the game, there would be a much more distinct Yakuza feel to it. And in some ways the Yakuza series is similar, but really not so much. In terms of gameplay, the overall feel is nothing like Shenmue. I never really understood that comparison. Yu Suzuki never set out to make Shenmue 3 like every other game out there. People tend to forget when you think back to the original Shenmue, no, Grand Theft Auto didn't make the whole sandbox world concept popular. And yes, we know there were games before Shenmue with that similar premise, but Shenmue put that style of gameplay on the map to be copied for years and years. Quick time events? Hated or not, Shenmue made that popular. I don't need to defend how groundbreaking Shenmue was. Shenmue 3 retains that original formula, especially because fans paid for that. Let's check out some jaded backers. I'm not going to talk about the whole fiasco with the PC version and Epic Store. Let's look past all of that and talk specifically about backers who ended up not liking the game, expecting something different instead. Here's one such backer. Overall, I am disappointed in this game, and the fact that very little story was revealed throughout, and that the story we have been waiting for 18 years did not conclude. As a $2,000 backer, and a so-called huge fan of the series, you really thought the game was going to be the conclusion to the series. You gave that much money, and as a huge fan who played the first two, you expected it to end here? Never mind the fact that Ryo never really overcomes any of his trainers in terms of technique or power, but is battling thugs and has difficulty with them. You now expect Ryo to take on the Chiyu men and Landi? So what were you expecting? There wasn't a few years gap with the training montage. Did you really think that this was the end of the whole series? He then rambles on about the whole Epic Store fiasco, and that's the main reason he thinks there's going to be no hope for Shenmue 4. Interesting. Some pointless complaints like Shenwa's house being a different design, I mean, is that really such a big deal? The game is horribly short. So, I beat the first Shenmue in about 10 hours, or sometimes less at times, usually more. Shenmue 3 took me at least 20 hours. I don't know how long it took this guy to beat the game, but I suppose if he was rushing through it, despite backing that much money and waiting 18 years to play it, you could beat it in less than 10 hours, I guess. But why wouldn't you be taking your time with it? Why did Sega refuse to include original arcade games within Shenmue 3, such as Virtua Fighter, Space Harrier, Hang On, Afterburner, or Outrun? So a lot of those titles actually appear in the Yakuza series. But is this Yu Suzuki and his team's fault? No, that's Sega's fault. Yes, the game lacks great arcade games seen in the first two, but how in any way is that a fault with Shenmue 3, since it's being made with a whole lot less involvement with Sega? That's not a fair complaint. The graphics are bad. Excuse me? Like an early 360 or PS3 game. Okay, 
I want to take people back to that time period, because a lot of people seem to make this comment. So let's look with your own eyes, people. Here are early PS3 and 360 games. Now let's look at Shenmue 3's world. It's entitled people that play AAA games making comparisons. Ryo's mouth doesn't move when he enters an area he shouldn't be going to, and then backs away saying, maybe I should talk to a few folks around here, etc. This looks very awkward. This is really a reason why you don't care for Shenmue 4? Ever think maybe Ryo is just thinking to himself? Yes, it's strange for him to speak to himself at times, but many times he's just thinking things. We as the gamers can hear this because, well, it's a video game. QTE are way too fast. That's true. QTE and the other games were not fast, and also not too slow so it was a fair balance. This game, QTE is way too fast, and really, I don't get that. Overall, he has a few good points, but the majority of complaints here are ridiculous. There's nitpicking, but then there's whatever this guy came up with with the majority of this. So let's talk about spoilers for a moment. Skip ahead if you don't want to hear this. A fight against Niaosun would have been great. Sure, but Ryo would not have won. He mentions how Ryo has been able to beat others throughout the two games previously. But let's be honest, his greatest challenge was probably against the great Chai, and he wasn't even involved really in the Chiyo men. So now, this guy thinks fighting a leader of the biggest villain group of Shenmue would have been great? Ryo was still having trouble fighting thugs in Shenmue 3. Yes, at some point in the story, Ryo will grow stronger through one way or another, but who actually thought he would fight Niao Sun or Landi and stand a chance? Landi sounds nothing like the original English voice actor from Shenmue 1. Well, I got some bad news for you, man. No one sounds anything like their original English voice actors, aside from Ryo, because Ryo is the only returning voice actor in the game. How does Ryo even interact with people in Hong Kong and mainland China? He can't read Chinese, but he can speak Cantonese and Mandarin? They surely don't understand or speak Japanese. Do I even need to argue against this? Why are they all speaking English in the dub? Some things are meant to be looked past. Yes, Shenmue is realistic, but it's not that realistic. Okay, that's enough from this Reddit post. The comments here represent pretty much all negatives most people have with this game. The so-called jaded Shenmue fans, I should say. So before I take a look at some actual reviews of the game, let's get a few misconceptions out of the way. Number one. Shamu 3 was never intended to be the final game. Despite what people like to claim, Yu Suzuki has specifically said that this is just another chapter in his series, so I don't know why people played this game thinking it was the last one. Number 2. Shenmue 3 was never intended to play like a modern game. Though people like to say it hasn't progressed in terms of controls and gameplay from part 1 and 2, I dare you to play those two again, and then play Shenmue 3. People are just being ignorant. Number 3. Shenmue 3 was made for Shenmue fans. Yu Suzuki is not catering to the casual or modern day gaming audience. Fans of Shenmue are, well, old at this point, let's be honest. I played the first one when I was 9 or 10 years old. I'm 30 now. That's how long we waited. Shenmue isn't exactly a series a lot of younger gamers look back on and play. It's a very niche series. Those three are very important to keep in mind as we read some of these reviews. 
So I have to start with IGN. In my Defending Daemon X Machina video, I talked about how IGN hates the Shenmue series. Which is funny, the original review got a pretty damn good score, but following articles were much more negative. Shenmue wasn't included in their top 25 greatest Dreamcast games list, and they followed that up with an article stating Shenmue is a garbage video game. So I have a grudge against them, the hipster elitist video game journalists. Wouldn't you know it? They gave Shenmue 3 a 5.9. They couldn't even give it a 6. Oh, and the comments. This guy says, 5.9 is about what I expected. 5.9 would be an extremely generous score for the first game by modern standards. Now that's the problem with a lot of modern gamers. They review older games with a modern mindset, which makes no sense whatsoever. You don't go back and play a system you probably didn't even grow up with, and then play a game like Shenmue and compare it to, say, Breath of the Wild or The Witcher. You have to have the ability to review a game despite nostalgia, positive or negative, and set your mind back into that time period, comparing it to other games of that era, if you must. It's hard for people to do that these days. Anyway just feels out of time and doesn't reward the Shenmue faithful with meaningful revelations in the story. Let's go back to those three points I made earlier. Yes, it's meant to play like an older game, and yes, the story was never meant to finish. There's no denying Shenmue 3 feels like it should have come out in the mid-2000s. It's funny, indie games today all do the same 8-bit or 16-bit side-scrolling stuff We've seen countless times on the NES and SNES, and yet we as gamers look past that and enjoy it for the old school feel. I think people are generationalists. Is that a word? We can go back to the 8-bit or 16-bit era, but God forbid we play a game that goes back to the Dreamcast era. You can't do that these days, for whatever reason, is seen as a negative. Yet, gamers eat up the hundreds of retro games that come out weekly, it seems. From there, you learn your new goal, to track down your friend Shenhua's kidnapped father so you can continue your journey to find your father's murderer, Landi, and finally, hopefully, kill him. So, do I have to put up another spoiler warning? Yeah, I guess so. Let's talk about how Ryo was never going to kill Landi. Despite him not magically growing stronger from part 2 to this one, how about the fact that Shenhua's little poem she quotes in all of these games play a major factor to the story? People neglect this point. He shall appear from a far eastern land across the sea. This is the Shenmue mantra. This is even said in the first Shenmue, and guess what? It doesn't even pertain to that one. It only manifests at the end of part two. A young man who has yet to know his potential. With Shenmue 3, Ryo still hasn't realized his potential. This potential is a power that could either destroy him or realize his will. His courage shall determine his fate. So tell me, where in Shenmue 1, 2, or 3 does Ryo ever come to a situation where this certain power plays a part. You could argue that you should have just crammed all of this stuff into part 3, but according to him, that would have made the game feel rushed and cramped. People want to compare video games to art, but they never really mean it. Like a novel series, there are many, many chapters and entries. They are never rushed though, and yet when movies are made, People complain that there is too much crammed into these movies. A video game is no different. An artist is trying to express his or her art in the way that they want. So Shenmue relies on the fans at this point to pay for the production. Oh well. Yu Suzuki is fine with that. These gamers and reviewers sure as hell should be fine with that too. Let the man do his art the way he envisioned it. I find it interesting that they found 
Bayou Village to be more interesting to explore compared to Niawu because, well, they never explained why. I spent too much time driving a forklift at my job and gambling after hours to make money to buy things that would open up training opportunities, only to have that lead to more trapezing across the city. Never once throughout the game did I ever feel the need to work a job or gamble to get money to progress at certain times. The amount of herb sets you can sell will make up for the bulk of the money you need. Now, for the hardcore collectors out there that want to buy everything the game has to offer, sure, I would say gamble. But to get through the story, there is the fighting arena that will pretty much net you the money you need once you sell off the winning tokens. The other essential element of self-improvement, the crucial training to improve your health, is boring. In Shenmue 1, you had to find a parking lot or park and just repeat the same moves over and over and over for hours to master a single attack. In Shenmue 2, you had to continually train with Jinmen in one minute sessions, leave the area, come back, talk to him again, train again to level up your moves, and repeat that process over and over. Shenmue 3 makes this so much easier. You can continue training right after your first session. So this reviewer stating the training is boring, well, hey, it's a big improvement over the first two. It's ignored the innovations of the past 20 years and kept doing its own thing. Wow, that's kind of the point. The lowest review available on Metacritic is from Ian Stokes of Trusted Reviews. Let's take a look. Ryo and Shenwa's returning voice actors are the worst, while the rest of the cast offers spirited attempts to save the material they're working with. So, by the way, there's already a mistake in this guy's review. First off, Shenwa's voice actress is not a returning voice actress. Say what you want about Ryo's voice acting, but Shenwa's is great. Still. That's worrying. Even for you? Yeah. I admit, I'm a little unsettled myself. What is with people saying it's bad? She's supposed to be a shy character who's very timid sounding. Brianna Knickerbocker also voices Vryn in Catherine Full Body, female Akira in Astral Chain, and, well, lots of anime I'm not familiar with. But the roles I'm familiar with, she's great in those. At least in previous titles, the voice acting was entertainingly awful. Here, it's just subpar. So, people have a problem with the voice acting in the game, yet they never switch over to the Japanese voices. Odd. What he says about the combat system doesn't seem overly negative. He even makes a good point about the training. Complaints about the Stanima system are fair. Then he goes on about the need for part-time jobs to make money. I don't get why these two reviews have neglected to talk about herbs. The QTE segments are bad, I'll give them that. The final point is about the story again. I really don't get what people didn't like about the story. Yes, the game starts off pretty slow in terms of plots, but by the end of the game, if you're a Shenmue fan, you should really enjoy what happens. So a positive for the review is that it's Shenmue and a negative is that it's Shenmue. Hmm. The pacing and story are also negatives, so the final verdict is a 2 out of 5 stars. Is this some sort of meme or trend that people follow? Shenmue received glowing reviews when it came out, but now we want to pretend it was never seen as a good game? GameSpace says, I'm disappointed with this game. It has perfectly kept the spirit of the original Shenmue, but in doing so has not brought any of the new innovations of the industry. It's ironic reading this quote about a Shenmue game when the original brought lots of new innovations into the industry. Real-time weather effects, QTE sandbox world, monotonous yet charming things like riding a bus, driving a forklift, buying food and feeding a stray cat, 
chatting with friends, chatting with strangers, playing games in an arcade, and on and on. With Shenmue 3, a Stanima system was introduced, which was made popular since the first two games came out. It features fishing, which many games include nowadays, a much quicker leveling up system, and overall faster gameplay. Lots of people say the game feels old, but why forget to mention the many modern aspects included? Basically take that quote from Game Space and it applies to every other bad or mediocre review the game received. Let's take a look at a positive review. PC Invasion gave the game an 8 out of 10, a much more respectable score, something I would give the game. Now they make the same criticisms that the others have made. Depending on what you enjoy about these games, you might love this or you might hate it. I enjoy the game, realistic nature of Rio having to practice every day. It also helps that you can do as little or as much of this as you want. If you don't feel like it, you can make a ton of money and buy a bunch of healing items and just spam those whenever you need and you'll probably be alright. So here's an important statement. Take your time with the game. Immerse yourself into the world and do whatever you want. I feel like people on the fence about how to feel about this game should play it at a slower pace. That reddit post from earlier said it was a short game, but he must have just been rushing through it. I get some of us are busy people, but Shenmue isn't a game to speedrun. There's too much to see and do, and the more time you spend with the game, the more you can appreciate it. Going from point A to B in the story doesn't make for the most enjoyable experience, but that's the point, you aren't supposed to play like that. Can I really defend the quick QTEs? No. Is the fighting system clunky? A bit. Is the story slow? Not unless you are rushing through the game. Is the ending bad? No way. Are the sections you were forced to look through drawers needed? Well, I think maybe once would have been enough. What I'm trying to get at is, the game isn't perfect. If a bigger studio helped to make the game, it would have obviously been different, but would it have been the same Shenmue? I don't think so. Character models don't make up the entirety of Shenmue 3's graphics or art design. Some reviews I've read focus way too much on that. Shenmue 3 is a beautiful game. Keeping in mind the small studio, the art style, and the way the environments pop out is pretty stunning. I love Sekiro's art design and environments the most last year in gaming, but Shenmue 3 is a very close second. I'll admit some characters look much more cartoonish than I would have expected, focus more on the art design and the world rather than the goofy faces. Learning little details that I've always wondered about was amazing. Yes, it doesn't finish the story, but for those saying it doesn't progress at all? Are you kidding me? Do you remember Shenmue 2? You travel to three different areas in that game, and the progression feels very minimal. That's the point. It's a long, overarching story. This one continues enough. I waited 18 years for them to just get out of that cave, and by the end of the game, I was happy with what had happened. Anyone familiar with the history of Shenmue knows that the story is made up of many chapters. With this game, the story comes to about 40% completion. Will the story ever finish? Who knows. But I'd rather you take his sweet time making the game he always envisioned than to just throw that all away for people who will just bash the game anyway. The controls are not dated, despite what you've read. Play the first two and then play this one. It's much smoother and Ryo isn't as stiff. The fighting system, though different, isn't stiff either. You can map certain attacks with the R trigger, making it easier to pull off moves and cycle through a few so you aren't just doing the same attack over and over. 
and with a better fighting system, I feel like this game would have received much better reviews. As a Shenmue fan, though, you'll enjoy it. Not sure why these so-called Shenmue fans felt the need to give it a zero. Obviously, on Metacritic, there are those who just put a zero. But looking at some other reviews, they compare to how advanced Resident Evil and Yakuza are compared to the first entries. Did they forget that this wasn't a big budget game? Yes, the 7 million collected from Kickstarter seems like a lot, but to make a video game on the same scale as Resident Evil? Are you kidding me? You can't compare the two. Sega didn't make this game. Use Small Studio did. People expected more from this game that was never promised. Big budget modern gameplay, a finished story, I don't know. Lower your expectations, I guess. 